Hi everyone, how are you doing? It's a gorgeous day here in London. Thank the Lord, it's felt like it's been a very long winter. Even though I did manage to escape to Mallorca for a lovely week with my family, I could definitely live in Mallorca. Um, it's really nice to feel the sun. Yes, how are you all? And gosh, you really love the 1970s vibe. I wasn't sure that you would, if I'm being very honest. I thought, oh, maybe it's a bit lame, maybe it's a bit boring, you know, because the 70s was just such a wonderful, fabulous time for hair and makeup. Maybe that particular look, the boho look, was going to be a bit soft, but you loved it, so I'm really, really pleased. Um, today I'm going to do a kind of rosy, sparkly look um, with some of my favourite Pat McGrath products, including this great artistry wand, which I've used in my kit, and I thought I've never really... Um, talked about it on here so I thought I would do that. Now I love the Skin Fetish. Um, this is a really beautiful base. Um, I actually decant some of it into the little containers when I'm at work because the packaging is really gorgeous and heavy um, but too heavy for my kit. But I don't have the exact shades for me. Um, I'm work, going to work between a number 14 and a number 21 medium. Obviously I've got a little bit of a tan on um, a well protected turn actually um, from my holiday and I say that like that because I got a dreadful reaction to a quite a strong um, vitamin C. I love to use vitamin C's and fighting those free radicals when I'm having lots of sun exposure um, but this one I will try again and I, should I let you know which one it was? Probably not. Let me try it again not in the sun. I think I used it morning and night for about four days and my skin blew up so I spent most of the time with a cap on my head and like factor 100 I mean that's I'm obviously exaggerating as usual on my face but yeah I did look some sort of like mottled pineapple no mottled well I could look like a mottled pineapple I was sort of thinking of more of a um pumpkin but pineapple came out instead <laughs> either one I didn't look that great on holiday <laughs> right okay so this base the reason I love this base so much is because it is and you would expect it to be next level this is not a sponsor post by the way or anything this is just something that I thought I hadn't done with my favorite pack products and I actually used to work with her um, a while back now um, because we worked for the same company Procter & Gamble and she used to be the artistic director globally of Max Factor and we used to put these not we I mean I didn't sort of work side by side with Matt uh, with Pat <laughs> or Matt at all um, but she would put these amazing trend reports together and then I would kind of work with the brand to kind of bring these to life and we would do big sort of like fashion shows for the corporate clients etc etc so it was a wonderful time sadly those days don't exist anymore um, but let us start I've, so I've got the 14 as it drips down my hand <laughs> I'm going to get on with it I'm going to use a very small real techniques brush just to, oh oh that's perfect Oh, that's great. I can actually put the other one away. So shade 14 must have been too dark for me and now it's perfect. Super, super yellow. Now I'm going to show you just sort of very quickly how sort of go around my mole, sorry. Um, and just this, the pigmentation, what you'll be able to see. I mean, honestly, it's like airbrushing. Um, and it works really well on an older skin and it also works well to a certain extent on a drier skin and I say it like that because some medium to heavy coverage foundations can actually sort of pinch and parch an older skin making it look heavier but applied lightly in the right way um, so I haven't gone in with my flat foundation brush and I haven't gone in with my fingers because let me just do this now oh look just been blimmin munched Oh, for goodness sake. Well, that is the sign of summer. I've just got a, a mosquito bite on my face. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, well, let's see if it works then, right? It's just literally I'm getting that preliminary itch on my face. Oh, well, you can definitely tell that it's a non-edited <laughs> film, makeup film. I don't know if I've talked about this before, but it's really annoying, isn't it, when you watch? I'm sure I talked about this before. I, I forget what I've said, where I've said it. But um, the makeup videos that look amazing um on uh tiktok or i'd actually watch tiktok i mean i know i should but i don't should i no i shouldn't do anything do anything i don't want to do but i guess part of my beauty world i should be involved with that but um as my 11 year old says come on mom i'll do it for you great off you go 
how much is your hourly rate? Just for love, surely. Okay, I must stop wittering because I've got lots to get through today. Anyway, aside of my chit chat, I just put that on with my fingers and you can see that it is much heavier. So you have to be careful when using um, a medium to heavy coverage foundation because you are going to see it on the skin. And I wonder whether you can on the lens. But here with the brush, you don't tend to see it so much. So my tip for this application of foundation is if you're using a medium to heavy, um, medium to heavy coverage foundation, then use a nice light buffing brush. I'm sure I've talked about this before because then you get a lighter application. If you put it on with your hands, like I would do with a tint, because I want to get the most of the product on the face because it's a lighter formula, I can get away with it, but not so much like this. So this little brush, keeping away from my eyes because I'm going to use a lighter colour for that, it just really, really perfects the skin quickly. And if I'm working with an actress or a, you know, a client that doesn't have much time, it's really great for me to get on a nice base without having to faff around too much because when I'm well, I can't believe this. That's what, that's what set me off on the twittering and the wittering. The blooming mosquito bite. Oh, well, there's always a little bit of activity that you don't expect on Speed Beauty. Oh, and I love the fact that someone put in the comments, I do love your slow beauty. <laughs> I do. Anyone, does anyone do branding out there? Help me. I've got the branding. I love my little typeface. But yeah, I've got the slow beauty and the speed beauty. The speed beauty should definitely be on Instagram. That's where it originated from. But this is definitely the slow beauty. And I'm sure you can find some other, <laughs> other words beginning with S that this might um, relate to my channel. Well, anyway, gosh, it's Monday morning and I'm quite chatty. Normally I'm like a big sort of slow train. But I feel quite fresh. Right. That is the base for now. So the next product that I love to use is um, the L2, yes, Skin Fetish Sublime. I'm reading that because I wasn't sure I got it the right way. It's glass. It feels really expensive and it should feel, exp should feel like that because it is expensive. Um, but it's a really beautiful concealer, again, for eyes like mine um, that need the coverage and the lightness but they don't want the dehydrated effect and I don't want it to move and go into my lines and stuff. So it's really punchy in coverage, which is what I want. Look at that. You need the tiny, I mean, this is just gonna last you for, for years. And I love the brightness. And sort of when I'm working as a makeup artist, I tend to kind of have on my hand so pretty much do now <laughs> three or four different shades and tones and um, I build these shades and tones um, to kind of create light and dark on the face to kind of perfect um, and beautify someone's face but all very very subtly but initially you need to get you need to get the product on and then you blend out and as I'd say with lots of my concealer I like to let it settle in and then buff because it's got you've got to put it on where you want it right and you want to get that lovely effect I might put a little bit on my hand actually and then take that on the brush and just give me that shot of light there not too much but I can just see that I need a little bit of space just around here to kind of create that shape over my cheekbone and then around my eye again there maybe I'll match that up there too so you pop it on and you don't have much play time but it lasts so it's a great product if you've got a big event or you don't find that your makeup lasts very long on your skin the pigment mix for this is really phenomenal but if you overdo it and you don't blend it quick enough, you'll find that it looks very obvious on your skin. If you've got lots of things you want to cover up, um, this is a great foundation if you've got um, acne or like me, lots of pigmentation, but you don't really want to use a lot of concealer. The foundation works super, super well. So that's given me a nice shape. So the blush I'm gonna use, I'm gonna start with that. Um, it's called Sexquisite Seductions. I think I used this before um, on an earlier film and 
it's just been one of those that I've kind of grabbed and grabbed and grabbed because it's just a really beautiful classic um, posy rosy colour, you know what I mean? Very classic. So let me just use my My Kit, Kit Stars S2, and I'm really going to whiz the product around in the brush. Oh, I may not have, ooh, have I seen it? Can you see it? <laughs> Upside down? Oh no, you can't see it. I've got a new tattoo. Yeah. A new tattoo? It's my first tattoo. You know, it's my 50th year, so I'm trying to do things um, that I thought that I might never ever do and then just do them anyway. Um, press that button of like, well, oh, let's go for it. It's my mum's signature, which I love. Um, and uh, it's quite nice to have her on my wrist. So when I need her strength and courage and her superpowers, I can rub it. She was really nonplussed about it. <laughs> I was like, Mum, I've done it. I've finally done it. I've got your signature tattooed on me. She went, oh, why have you bothered? Why have you done that? She does not like tattoos. <laughs> so it was a real anticlimax. And you see what I mean about this blush? Even though I've really gone well into the blush it has it oh god do you know what i hate that's happened with that jones road blusher that i put the bronzer in and the powder just flew everywhere one it's really not good for your bedroom or bathroom wherever you put your makeup on but it's just ridiculous to have all this flying pigment around so this blush just it just has such a beautiful dimension to it and it makes me look healthy without looking like i've got too much makeup on um, and I like that. Sometimes I like that, you know, punch of colour if I'm really feeling like... <laughs> I'm really feeling tired. I think the other day my husband was like, I've overdone the blush. And I'm like, you can never, ever overdo the blush. <laughs> um, anyway, this is a, a blush that in his idea, I suppose, would be more of a natural one. But I just really like this. It's such a beautiful colour. Good. Okay, so that's my, one of my favourite blushes. I'm going to go with the mascara and eyeshadow and the intensifier artistry wand. Now this is this is my gameplay. So you know that I really love the Urban Decay um, eye primer. That's my favourite, along with the Nars. This is really beautiful when I'm putting on metallics, um, and I've used it so much that I've literally hardly got any left. So I'm going to have to take the. Um, product which is the eye primer just it's a twisty uppy one and comes up but unfortunately I've come to the end of my twist so I'm just going to use my little brush and I'm going to sweep it across the lid here now it feels very cooling on application it doesn't tighten my skin and it's sort of I guess it's got a little bit of alcohol in it it might sort of evaporate I need to check on that if anyone has got irritation to that but that's what it feels like when I put it on so it's slightly cooling some eye primers can feel a bit gloopy and thick and then kind of create a coagulation with your eyeshadow. But this is super, super nice. So this is my palette I'm going to use. I will list the name in the description. Um, actually, no, it's the, it's the, um, it's the uh, Shade Throwing and Eye Ecstasy palette. Um, I love all these colours and I mix them together at work so much. I'm going to go in with this like rosy shade here. But just to show you what this does, I'm just going to use my finger. So that's placed on there. And if I just place it on that area, you get this incredible intensity straight away. And also it stops it from not sitting evenly on the skin, which is kind of a strange thing because if you've got a damp eyelid and you put eyeshadow on, normally it goes very patchy. Um, but this, put on with your finger over here, almost breaks it into a very soft cream, but nothing that moves. Um, and I love putting this on my clients before I put eyeshadow on, because it doesn't give me the, doesn't give me the fear that I haven't got the time to blend it. It just almost just does the work for me. And I have no idea how it does that. It's just great. So let me take my Otis Battersby 110 and soften that edge so that I haven't got a hard edge. And what that has done has just lifted the eye. It obviously keeps the shadow on for longer. It stops it from creasing 
I'm only going to say, okay, it doesn't completely set the shadow. If your eyelid is very greasy and produces a lot of oil and is um, quite deep set, you will always, unfortunately, get movement in the pigment. Um, but look how lovely that is, straight away. Maybe I should just show you on the other side without, the, without it. You see how much more lighter that is? See the difference? And I'm having to work much more on it. Look at the difference. See? So it really, really intensifies. And it doesn't... So sometimes you can do that with water, with eyeshadows, they say. You know, you mix the shadow with water. Um, that's fine, but then when the water dries, you, you go back to the same shade again. So that's the difference. So let me just put a little bit of that on there. I need to order another one of these. So it just comes up, you just like roll it up and place it on and you, you don't need much at all. Let's just place that over there. Now you can place this product over things and over other things, over eyeshadow as well. I just prefer to use it as a base. So put my finger in and press it on. Bit of an ugly shape, isn't it? Um, so so nice. So yes, if you have issues with your eyeshadow and you never really get that true colour payoff, in fact, it'd be nice to try it with maybe an Elf eyeshadow or a, a cheaper eyeshadow to see whether it enhances that kind of colour. Let's get this on. It's also this colour is really nice with a green eye, isn't it? You brought the green out in my eye. And it just shows you how um, easy it is to make the best of your eyes just by putting a little bit of colour on with your finger. So, oof, let my eyes settle a bit there. Right, so while it's still a little bit wet, I don't want to lose my time, I'm going to place Oh, actually, do you know what? Just in case, I'll put a little bit more over the top because I'm going to place the metallic. Where is it now? It's rolled over here. Um, I'm going to place the metallic just over the lid. And then this kind of really gives this kind of like modern edge. Again, with my finger, I use the same finger that I did before. And I'm just going to place that there and place it there. Now, when I do it, I'm placing it quite firmly. Okay, because you really want to push the pigment in. And another great thing about this is that when you place it on a slightly damper lid, you're not going to get any fallout down your face. So that's another great way to do this. So that edge is obviously too soft. I'm just going to wipe my hand on there and use the same brush and then buff those edges in so that it just blends together. But it's that nice catch of light shot of light look it gives it a sort of bit of a modern edge but I've still got that colour just sort of pushing back my socket you don't want to bring that highlight up here you want to keep it kind of more intense and then you can go in with a bit more shadow if you want just up here to make sure that that doesn't become too hoodie and then blend it all out so it looks nice and soft Right, I'm just going to get a clean brush to make sure that when my eyes settle that all works nicely. And because I've got that nice shot of light there, I'm not going to do it anywhere else apart from taking the same brush actually because it's an angled brush that I took the pigment from and place that brush just in that pigment there and just cut that in to my eye. These angled brushes are great for doing the soft angles around your tear duct. And that adds a real, really lovely soft brightness. And this has got a slightly goldy, pinky metallic hue to it. And I think kind of adding that light just in the corner there is really great, especially if you're feeling a little bit tired. Right, next on with the mascara, Fetish Eyes. Now, this brush is great. Not normally the kind of 
bristled, twisted brush that I like. But look at the effect. Normally, this kind of brush, well, it does anyway, gives you a kind of feathered look. But too natural for me. I like to whack on the mascara quickly and as effectively and efficiently as possible. Just because it's sort of a mascara application is how I spend quite a bit of my time. I don't know if that's a sad thing or not, um, on myself or, or on others. But look, this is not by any means natural or soft. And I'm not saying that natural isn't great. I'm just saying that's what I like. How great are those lashes, right? Now I'm going to lift up and bring mascara to the top. Right, just finish off a second coat. Second coat always creates the magic. Lifting, and it's a short brush. And I like that because I don't, it stops me from getting mascara everywhere. And then just pull back a little bit. Sometimes I'm getting mascara on my lid. So I'll just take my Muji Fine. Well, oh, I haven't done too badly. Such a good mascara. Love it, love it, love it. Very nice, pretty, but kind of modern and lovely and rosy. Right, for lips, I'm going to do a combo. You know I love her lipsticks. In fact, Obsessed is my favorite orangey red lipstick, but I've done that and I have it everywhere and I love the packaging and oh, did I show you this one the other day? Look at this. I mean, look at this. It is the most beautiful, beautiful gift. So lovely. Maybe should I put that one on? I was gonna put that one on, let me just see. Maybe it would work. Okay, let's put it on, seeing as I'm loving it so much. It's called, uh, I thought it was called Butterfly. It's called um, Nude Romantic. Nothing like Butterfly. Nude Romantic. Actually, this is a much nicer name than I thought. But I just, this, this the colour and the packaging. Mm -mm -mm. And, of course, the texture. So it's not as dry and as matte as Obsessed. That's the orangey red that I've spoke about before. If you're not sure, you're new to the channel, I can do more orangey red lipsticks for summer if you want, because this is literally my happy place. Um, it's a very lovely, your lips, but perfected. Mm -mm. I think I'd like it more rosy for this look. If you can see, with the warmth that I've got on my eyes and the warmth that I've got on my cheek, the sun's actually coming out, so it's kind of like bleaching the look a little bit, but I think you'll pick it up on the camera. So I'm going to warm it up a little bit. Now I can go to town on my bottom lip, like a show off, but my top lip, I have to be a little bit more modest about. I'm waiting for the dream treatment that I can just soften that skin on the top of my lip. Uh, not really for anti-aging thing because, you know, whatever. But just for that joy of putting lipstick on because it just looks too bumpy. Anyway, whatever, there's really far worse things to be worrying about. But anyway, love that lipstick. So let's balance that with the classic Bare Rose lip liner. And I think I'll be able to work these two together to complement the warmth of the tones because, as I said, it's a little bit too cold. Oh, <laughs> let's sharpen that. Right, back with a fully sharpened Bare Rose Liner. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Now, when you're buying, what's well, when we go all quiet? When you're buying or investing in makeup, you're buying into the just the texture and the quality. Not all the time. Just going to just straighten that up a little bit. And it's when you put these products on these lip products, these foundation products, that you just realise what you're buying into. Absolute pleasure and enjoyment of putting on products 
that feel sensational and last just because let's put on just a little bit more blusher because what I want to do is lift there are you see lift that cheekbone I was feeling a bit so that adding that do you always keep your lovely orbital area nice and bright and light but I just needed that shape to add a little bit more of a lift there we are just to make it a little bit more angular and I don't want any glass on my skin or oh, that's just enough I just love the fact oh, I didn't use any of her powder I've got the powder here I don't think I needed it though I could maybe put a little bit of powder and just finish off the blush one thing at a time one thing at a time um cool oh, I love these eyes I might even just go more on the eyes let me just take a little bit of this highlighter there I know you like all the finishing touches which is what it takes for everything right the finishing touches of any creative piece is all about the final adjustments that's nice so just mix that in just keep extending that up it's amazing isn't it most of our faces take the makeup and then it kind of dissolves into our pores um, and you don't get the nice effect for longer so that final coating that final wash of color and just making sure that you're really separating that eye shape from your base makes all the difference anyway she'll do for now um yeah i can't bother with the powder that's fine don't need the powder the only thing i do is a little bit of powder on my nose to keep it on a little bit longer but um i'm actually happy with that so there's a few of my favorite pat products um obviously an incredible brand really pigmented long lasting and um, gives great effects in strong light and in daylight. Anyway, as usual, thank you so much for all your support, all your lovely comments. I feel so fortunate and um, it's great to have such a lovely tribe of women with me. Thank you so much and have a great week. Bye for now.